I need more soap again? Why do these things always... What am I going to do with all these little bits and... Wait a minute. I know. Ah. Hey, everybody. So today, I figured in order to deal with all those pesky little bits of leftover soap bar, we would make a soap saver scrubby. And these are super great for just about any room of the house, but they're, they're made out of cotton, so they're really nice. You can put all of your little soap bits inside it. Um, so you don't have to throw them out. You don't have to waste, um, you know, your soap because I mean we spend a lot of money on these things. So you put all your little soap bits in there. You cinch it shut. You can tie it in a bow or not, and then you can like use it as a scrubby in the shower, um, and you don't end up wasting any soap. Um, these also make really great grit gifts at Christmas or for birthdays or any other reason you see fit to give somebody a gift. You create one, put a bar of soap in it, and then um, put it on top of the present, or that can just be the present. Nice hostess gift, nice housewarming gift. Um, a whole bunch of these in a little basket, super cute. Anyway, today, that's what we're going to make. So, let's get into it. Okay, in order to start with, um, we're going to use nice cotton crafting yarn. And this is uh, this Bernay particular handcrafter cotton. This is sort of something you can get pretty much anywhere that yarn is sold in bulk, like Walmart or um, a Stedman's, VNS, or um, anywhere that they sell lots and lots of just different kinds of balls of yarn. In order to start making our little soap saver scrubby, uh, we're going to use cotton yarn, and we're going to start with a slip knot. So you take your string, and you wrap it around your fingers, and you take the long part, and you bring it up through the hole, so that you've got a loop and then you pull both ends like that and you can put that on your hook and that's how you get a slip knot. Okay, we're going to chain. I'm using a using my typical, it's a 4.25 millimeter hook, it's a G6. This is a very common sized hook and it works well with the size of this yarn so that's why I'm using it. So we're going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there we go. That's ten chains. Now this is going to be the 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 width of our little soap saver. So in order to work in single crochet, because you're working back and forth, you have to give a turning chain to yourself at the end of every row. Now this is a slightly different scenario, but we do have to start with a single turning chain. So we're going to single, we're, sorry, I'm going to chain one more. So we have a total of 11. We're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So this one here, second chain, single crochet. We're going to single crochet twice more into that same chain for a total of three. There we go. And now we're going to single crochet into each chain across until we get to the very last one. So one in each chain. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we've gotten to the last chain. Into this last chain, we're going to single crochet three times. One, two, and three. Now, instead of going back and forth like we would in order to make a flat piece of fabric, we're going to continue single crocheting along the bottom of our foundation chain. So we've put three single crochet in the, in the second chain from the hook to start. We've single crocheted down the side of the foundation row, 
got to the last chain, put three single crochets into that last chain. And what this is doing, these three chains on either end, is actually creating a, a rounding edge, or what will be original, eventually the sides. So now we're going to single crochet along these bottom stitches. There should be eight in total because we've used the end and the end. So I'm going to crochet over top of my tail here just to weave it in. But we're going to single crochet now into the bottom of each foundation stitch. And the last one. Now that brings us all the way back up to the top. So you've got, see this nice rounding oval shape that's happening here. We're going to join in this top first single crochet with a slip stitch to close off our row. Now you don't have to, you could also just single crochet all the way around and around and around sort of in a circle if you wanted, but because I don't usually do this, I figured I would, I would try something slightly different today. So now you've created what is going to be the bottom of the little soap saver bag. So now all we have to do is start a new row. So you chain one to start the row because we're single crocheting and a single chain is the same height as a single crochet. We're going to single crochet into the same stitch as the joining, all right, and then we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So here we go. And you don't have to worry about the little holes that show up um, across the bottom of this thing or that show up while you're, you're single crocheting. If you have a slightly looser stitch, it's okay because what is happening here is we're making a little baggie to put all of our soap remnants in. And it's also going to double up as a scrubby, remember? So you've got all of your soap remnants in this nice cotton little baggie that you can use like a face cloth or a washcloth. And you want some little holes to be there just so that the water and the suds can move in and out of the object more freely. So I've gone all the way around the bottom and I'm coming back up to the very beginning of my second row. So I single crochet in that last stitch and you see this little thing here? This is the single crochet uh, or I should say the chain that we made in order to start row two. So this is not a real stitch. It's something pretending to be a stitch. It's just the chain we made. We're going to ignore it. We're going to slip stitch into the top of the real single crochet. And that is the end of row two. And you can see already that there's like a little bit of a boat shape happening. So all you want to do now is just begin every row with a chain one and single crochet into that same stitch that you joined in and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Remember to join your, like close off your row with a slip stitch in the top of the first single crochet you made. So ignore that chain. You want to identify the first single crochet. You want to close off your row by slip stitching into the top of that single crochet and then chain one and you want to repeat the process all the way around again. Now, eventually, this is going to really curl itself into um, an oval, uh, sort of a rounded rectangular little bag. And as you can see, I'm just coming to the end of my third row again. So this is a really quick little project. Now, you can also do this in half double crochet if you want to, but just remember when you start your row, you need two chains, because two chains is the height of a half double crochet instead of one. So here we are back at the beginning again, and we're going to skip that stitch. And I see that I've got an extra stitch here, and I'm going to I'm going to ignore that stitch. Actually, no, I will. 
I will put a thing in here. That's another thing you want to do. You want to always look at your um, at your little bag and make sure that it's not going out. You want to make keep it straight, and you can do that by cheating. Like for example, maybe I won't put this extra stitch in there. Um, you can just cheat by leaving a stitch out or adding a stitch every single row. So um, you can also just count. For example, you should have eight on each side and three at each end. So 16 plus six is 22. So you should always have a, a total of 22 stitches all the way around here. And if you find out that you've got one more than you need or one less than you need, then just single crochet to do together. Skip the last stitch and single cro like slip stitch directly into the first single crochet. Or if you're short, just single crochet twice in the same stitch. And believe me, no one's going to see the cheat stitches anyway. <laughs> um, so this is what you want to do. You want to continue in that pattern all the way around until it's as long as you want. Maybe, um, you know, four or five inches tall. And we will see you back um, after you've got it as tall as you like. Oops, I even forgot. I gotta chain one, single crochet into that first stitch, and... I'm off. Okay, I have finished um, with making it as tall as I want and including the foundation row, which is one, I'm going to count as one. It is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen rows high. So this is sixteen rows high. It's as tall as I want. Um, a small bar, a regular soap would fit into this. So now I'm going to put on the row that includes the drawstring holes. So I am going to continue like I used to. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch as the joining. I'm going to chain two. One, two. I'm going to skip two stitches and single crochet into the next one or the third one away. Single crochet. I'm going to chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third and I'm going to continue this all the way around one two until I get back to the beginning one two one two and I'm going to end with a single crochet and that puts me right up against the first single crochet so I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that one and now I'm going to put a finishing row on. So I'm going to chain one, single crochet into the same stitch as I joined in. I'm going to put two single crochets into this hole, because it's technically two chains. I'm going to single crochet into the top of this stitch, wherever I can get my hook to go in. There we go. I'm going to single crochet twice more into the next stitch, or the next hole I should say, and then I'm going to single crochet into the top of that single crochet, and that is going to give me a nice finishing row all the way around. So you're going to want to continue this little pattern. One, two, into the top of that stitch. And, you know, be patient with yourself. It's a little awkward trying to single crochet into stitches that are kind of there, but kind of not, because you were chaining. So, relax. Don't worry. If you have to fight a little bit to get your hook to go through an area, it's not because you did it wrong or because you did it too tightly. It's just sort of slightly awkward. So, don't worry about it. And just nearing the end here. I'm going to put in two more stitches into this hole. I remember that I finished with a single crochet, so I'm going to single crochet into the top of that stitch, and then I'm going to slip stitch. All done, and I'm going to fasten off. So 
So snip my yarn, pull my yarn through my, my loop. There we go. Now you can weave your, your little tail in. I'm going to do that later. First, we want to make our drawstring. So you can use a different color if you want or the same ball. Um, this is really, really simple. All you're going to do is create a slip knot. So you wrap your string around to create a loop. And you can either pull it through this way or you can do what I do and just grab it with your hook and pull it through. There you go. And now we're going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now 20 is technically um, all the way, that that's, should be the length, if you split it in half, that should be the width of your, your little baggie. So now, because I want to have enough room to tie a, a, a bow, I'm going to chain another 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I know that that is long enough, so I'm going to snip my yarn and pull it through that loop just to fasten off. There we go. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to weave it in and out of those little holes that I made. So in one, out another, in one, out another in one, and then I'm going to bring it out through the same hole that I brought it in with. And there you have it. Cinch is nice and tight. You can tie it in a bow or a knot, and you can easily undo it and put stuff in there. There you go. Ta -da! Super Soap Saver Scrubby. Made out of cotton. Great for a gift, great for around the house. Make up a whole pile of them and have them on hand because then you could just grab them if you're going off to somebody's uh, housewarming or for showers, pretty much anything because everybody loves getting a bar of soap and everybody likes, uh, you know, a little something to use in the shower. Um, these are also great gift ideas for stockings. I'm talking to you girls who don't start crocheting your Christmas crafts early enough. <laughs> Start now, trust me. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so there you go. Super simple and um, really useful. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Once again, please subscribe, please like, and uh, share these videos with your friends if you know other people who like to crochet or, or enjoy really simple crafts. It really helps us out, and it certainly inspires us to make more things here. We will see you again really, really shortly. We're going to be getting into a whole pile of beginner stuff uh, because we've had some requests for... Um, really basic training and that's exactly what we're going to do and we're going to be getting into that very shortly so we will see you again very very soon thank you for tuning in bye <laughs>